What's up guys, Fobster here, back with a very special video. If you watch my MezcoCon recap, you'll remember that I mentioned the Mezco Times Crossword Puzzle Challenge where four randomly selected winners would receive a rare, unreleased Mezco 112 collected figure. Well, one of those winners happened to be a friend of mine, and when he offered me a chance to take a look at the figure, it was going to be a big yes for me, dog. And I have that figure for you guys to review today, so without further ado, here is Gomez, Clan of the Crimson Dragon Edition. And here we have Clan of the Crimson Dragon Gomez outside of the packaging. First of all, you know I had to break out the white backdrop in honor of Adam Van Wickler at Playing With Myself on Instagram, who once again let me borrow this figure to review. I do not own this, so of course I'm going to be extra careful with it as I review it, take a look around, show you guys exactly what is different between this release and our recent clan of the Golden Dragon Gomez, which was released over the summer as part of Mezco Con. And taking a closer look at Gomez now, you can see he's got this kind of dull gold head with these bright red eyes. Looks a little different than the Roach with the Golden Gun Gomez, which had this kind of bright gold, along with the bright gold eyes to match it. This is more of a dull color with bright red eyes to offset it, so I do like that look. And see, the eyes are more red, and the suit is more of a deep dark almost bloody red so nice crimson color very accurate description on the back he's got the same dragon pattern as the golden dragon gomez which we will compare in a little bit this is exactly the type of figure that mezco does so great which is a real world fabric clothing look rather than a lot of the vinyl patternings you might see on some of the comic book based figures which do worry some people in terms of how is that going to hold up over time over temperature changes and stuff like that so this kind of thing this kind of material you really don't have to worry about that with, which is so great. You know this figure is going to hold up over time as well as any of the other ninja style Gomez figures. I'm very biased to the black and red look, of course. I do love that red and black attack, that bread. You know, if you're a Jordan collector, you know what I'm talking about. Whether it's clothing or shoes, I just love the black and red colorway. So I think this might be my favorite look for any of the Ninja Gomez's for sure. You can see, of course, there's some detailing on the arm guards, which makes it different than the Shadow Assassin Gomez variants, which had more of a smooth arm guard, more detailing, and definitely more value added to this in terms of accessories as well over the Shadow Assassins. You can see he's got this belt, which actually ties in on the back right here. It's a kind of a weird nod, nah, not one that I know personally. It's not exactly like tying a shoelace. It's a little bit more complex than that. So if you do happen to untie this, you're probably gonna have to look online for a manual or some kind of instruction on how to retie this type of karate gi sash. But you can see one thing that does bother me about many of the Gomez Ninja variants from Mezco is that the pants tend to kind of fall down and the belt can kind of sag underneath it or maybe the belt can kind of ride up since it's an actual loose fitting piece it's not stitched in anywhere so you are going to have to like fumble with the belt a little bit to get it where you want it but you have to consider that part of the posing especially for photography is knowing you know which parts of the the clothing need to look natural and where you have to move them in relation to the posing to make them look natural but you don't have to worry about the pants falling off or anything i believe they're actually stitched into the undershirt here as well as the the top of the shirt here so all you got to do is just kind of move the belt up to hide where it kind of might bunch up and then tie it a little bit in the back to tighten it up in the front looking like homer simpson trying to look skinny in front of marge you know what i mean it's that type of look but again something to consider when you're doing photography is the posing, if you will, of the clothing is just as important as the posing of the figure. Now, moving into his articulation, if you're familiar with any of Mezco's Gomez figures or their ninja figures or even their diabolic, which by the way he shares a foot sculpt with, you'll know exactly what type of articulation you're getting with Gomez. You can pop the head off, you can see he's got a double ball peg right here on the top, as well as the bottom of the neck, so you get a nice range of movement out of him there. You get a slight butterfly joint, you get bicep swivel, you get double jointed elbows, you get the classic Mezco hands, which is kind of a single ball peg that can twist in any direction, pivot forward or back. You get a nice ab crunch out of him, and also at the bottom of the waist, which is also where he swivels. Levels. You get a nice crotch joint which can bend all the way up and sideways and down and back as well as a double jointed knee. No calf swivel. It's actually just the, the clothing which is twisting around right here. But you do get a nice swivel and pivot out of the ankle right here. So overall, one of the best articulated bodies that Mezco has, and of course they like to use it on their premier mascot character and give us some nice posing options with him. As you can see, he can actually get all the way down pretty convincingly. If I make them, you know, I'd have to spend some real time on this. I'm just doing this real fast right now. But if you spend some time on it, you can actually make him look pretty solid crouching down or kneeling or whatever you want. Get him in some good like, flying kick poses. 
you know, you can do quite a bit with this body. Like I said, this fabric is the kind of thing that Mezco does really well and allows their figures to pose really well, not having any of the vinyl stuff kind of restricting the articulation of the body underneath. So one of the best articulated figures that Mezco has ever done, both for its buck body and the clothing that allows for it. Now up next, I'm going to get into Gomez's accessories, which he actually has a lot of. Of course, with every Gomez, you do get some variant of Boom Boom, the boom box. I really like this color for it. It's definitely a lot brighter and a lot more striking. And then the gold is a lot more gold, of course, than the gold on his head. Even from his eyes, you know, it's, it's a pretty different color. This is just a straight up Iron Man color boom box. And he also comes with a little mini version of Grub, his little sidekick, which we all remember from Lone Roach and Grub as well. He also comes with a little tiny katana that you can hold in his hand as well. He also comes with a sticker sheet for Boom Boom, which I don't remember getting with the Golden Dragon Gomez. I don't know if that's new or not. Straight up just don't remember getting this, but you got some cool stickers in here. You got, like, you know, a little mini Golden and Crimson Dragon here, and a little Sushi is a Shinobi right here. Another Sushi. Ninja Star, this says F-U, and then what looks like a Mezco logo in kind of a yin-yang style. It's kind of cool. We should get a sticker of just that, like, real big. Love that for my Mezco swag collection. And moving into some of his weapons, you get from what my research is called a uh, Kusarigama, connected with a real metal chain, as you can see right here, as well as a Kyoketsu Shoge with a real metal chain and ball attached at the end. You get some kunai right here. You get some size, you get two of them. You get two of these uh, Tanto swords, I believe I'm saying that correctly. You get one kind of medium length katana with a sheath as well. If I bring in the other accessory tray here, you see he comes with a bow, comes with two different arrows, one with a slightly thicker arrowhead to it, as well as a bundle of arrows which can fit inside of his cloth quiver. You get a couple of these claw weapons, which I believe are called Shuko. And you also get these two kind of fisted weapons. I absolutely have no idea what these are called. If you know what these are called, let me know. I actually would love to know. I got a couple of nunchucks connected with a real metal chain, and then here's the little sword I was talking about for Grub. You get four grenades, which I'm gonna go ahead and call smoke grenades because of the smoke effect he comes with as well, which is a nice teal blue color, different from what we got with the Golden Gomez, which is more of a purple. You also get four of these ninja stars shuriken i should say you get four of these shuriken he also comes with this small grappling hook which has an entire string attached to it which i'm not going to unravel here but it does give you some good options if you want gomez to look like he's about to throw this up and grapple onto some kind of wall or climb over an obstacle you also get a couple of foam inserts which go inside of boom boom so you can hold several of his weapons this one looks like it's meant for the kunai and the shuriken this one looks like it's for the kunai and something else maybe the sh maybe the nunchucks actually they look like it would fit pretty nicely in there and he comes with this posable cloak as well which has a nice little bendable wire in here that you can use to wrap around gomez in whatever way you see fit you know if you want to have him kind of ducking under the cover of night or whatever you can see that lays on him pretty well you can spend some time posing it and making it look more flush i'm not going to mess with the bendy wire too much to keep it nice for adam and of course, with every Gomez, you get an entire suite of hands here, which includes a pair of fists, which he has on right now, a pair of posing hands, or as Glenn Webb used to call them, gestural hands. You get a pair of sword holding hands, a pair of gun holding hands, rifle holding hand, rifle bracing, a pointing hand, a two finger pointing hand, middle finger hand, grenade holding hand, just every possible expression you could have for Gomez. Here is a hand for that purpose. And Gomez also comes with a couple of interchangeable heads. First is this kind of more realistic ant or roach head, which has more of a striking gold color, of course, than the one he comes packed with, which is more dull. I think this would actually fit onto the golden roach Gomez pretty well, roach with the golden head. He actually didn't come with any interchangeable heads other than the solid like 24 karat head or whatever. So this might be actually a really good option for the roach with the golden head Gomez. You also get this one right here which is definitely a more realistic roach looking head with these translucent blue eyes, more of a matte black, maybe with a slight gray finish to it. I wonder which version this might go best on, maybe the Stealth, Stealth Ops Gomez? And finally, it would be a Mezco figure without a classic Mezco stand done in this very nice red and gold color. Again, Iron Man colors to me. And of course the posable arm stand as well as a magnetic stand, which you can use to put them onto any magnetic surface. It's got the same kind of clamp that the regular arm stand has, so you can put them in here and then stick them to something magnetic. 
pretty cool idea. I think these usually come with the Spider-Man figure, so it's nice to have a agile Gomez to go with it and take advantage of this. It also comes with this Naginta weapon, which I believe I'm saying that right. Naginata, Naginta, you let me know in the comments below. He also comes with a few extra pouches, like this one right here, which you can put around his waist just elastically like this. You can put some of his weapons in here, like the kunai, you can put the size, or maybe the small swords right in here. This actually opens up with a real zipper. There's a foam insert that you can take out, and you can store maybe his bombs or his shuriken inside of here. And then on the inside of the elastic waistband, there's one more little slot. This would be maybe for his katana that you can slide all the way through. And he also has this pouch right here which straps around him and clips in the center right here with an actual buckle and that would just go right around his waist you can put again more of his weapons on the inside right here this is meant to be a quiver so you can put the bundle of arrows right there inside of this slot and then right in here you can put some of his extra arrows or even some of the, the smaller weapons like the swords or the size and then he also has one more small pouch which you would actually have to take the belt off and then loop around with this tied through so that you can get the full effect of it, but I don't mind just actually tucking it in here, and then if you get it, you know, I'm doing it loosely like this, but if you can get that right, it actually looks pretty good on the front, or maybe even on the back right here, you can just kind of slot that through and it holds. All right, now I want to get into some comparisons. I'm going to mostly do some comparisons between other Mezco figures that I feel this Clan of the Crimson Dragon Gomez would go really well with. Of course, the first one I'm going to throw in is the Clan of the Golden Dragon Gomez, which was a Mezco Con exclusive over this summer, as well as something that released not long after that which is the House of the Golden Skull Ninja. And I think these three look amazing together. I like swapping the Black Skull head onto the Golden Dragon and have it be the leader of my House of Golden Skulls Ninjas. Having this Crimson Dragon Gomez kind of be the, the main Ninja Gomez of my little Rumble Society universe. And up next, I'm going to throw in a couple of other versions of Gomez, which I think will make for some interesting little swaps or universe building. We got the regular Agent Gomez right here. This is the comic book version that came not long after Toy Fair a couple years ago. And then we have our Designer Con exclusive Lone Roach and Grub Gomez here, or Samurai Gomez if you're nasty. Now you can see these three also look great together. I love how the crimson of this Gomez kind of matches this one. So I guess if you wanted to, maybe you could throw this, this kind of over robe, I guess over this Gomez and it would still look pretty good. I actually wanted to bring the Agent Gomez in here as well because if I pop the head off of Crimson Dragon here, you can see that the skin tone underneath on his neck isn't actually matching with the head. The head is this gold dull color like I mentioned, but the neck underneath is a regular skin tone. So I think if you wanted to do a standard, you know, Ninja Gomez, this would actually kind of allow for it because it matches so well with the skin tone of the regular Gomez. And I think this looks really good right here. Shadow Assassin Gomez, I believe, had a standard Gomez head like this as well, so I think having this gives you a good option for a standard Ninja Gomez. And if you like head swaps like that, just stick around. I'm going to do a bunch at the end with a bunch of other Mezco figures. Just going to compare a few more right here. Shadowlands Daredevil here, as well as Five Ronin Wolverine, which I think also look great together if you wanted to maybe make this Crimson Dragon Gomez like a hand ninja for your Marvel Universe. I think this will work really well. Of course, it's very hard to get these right now. There's only four in the world, so you're going to have to wait to army build this or spend a lot of money, so don't do that. But hopefully this guy gets released, and I think when he does, I'll probably end up picking up a couple and having the Crimson Dragon Gomez be my hand ninja, you know. So I think he looks great with this Shadowlands Daredevil here. You know, the, the red matches just a little bit, just enough, let's say. And then if you wanted to have Wolverine fighting some ninjas as well, I think this will work great. Finally, I'm going to bring in the Netflix Daredevil here. You know, he does fight the hand on that show, so this could make sense. As well as the standard edition of Logan, which, you know, in the plain clothes, which if you wanted to put on the patch head on him, you could have Logan fighting ninjas in Madripoor during that time. Or you could have Matt Murdock from Netflix here fighting the hand. All right, so the last thing I want to hit you with before I let you go is to just give you a bunch of head swaps so you can see the versatility of this figure. First thing we're going to do is just pop the head off of him. As I noted, he does have the Gomez-style neck with the kind of brown skin tone, so ignoring that, we can look at some of these head swaps. First up, we're going to do the Black Skull right here from the Agent Gomez, the regular release of Agent Gomez with the comic book. Solid Black Skull, which I think looks really cool on here. Really nice offset with the black of the outfit and the glossiness of the gauntlets 
with the inside of the skull and of course you can put the hood up and get the full effect of that cover the neck a little more you got a nice crimson black skull ninja which I think looks really cool and then putting the hood down this black skull also allows you to maybe pop on this Oni mask right here which you get from the tiger stripe Wolverine and I think this looks awesome right here the red of the mask I think really complements the crimson of the suit pretty well so this together is a really good combination that looks just awesome to me of course any of the skulls will work so if you have any of the clear skulls from the bag of skulls pack there you go now I think one of the main things a lot of people are going to do with this ninja body especially the gold skull ninjas of course is to put the diabolic head on here which pops on very neatly is a little small maybe for the neck but of course it is covered by the the high turtleneck right there you can put the hood up and there you go you got a pretty solid generic crimson ninja which i think works pretty well for like hand ninjas and stuff like that you can also of course put the unmasked diabolic head if you want to have him be like the master of the crimson ninjas and then move it into some dc figure head swaps so we're going to start with this ben affleck bruce wayne head off of the mdx nightmare batman from batman vs superman which doesn't pop on there but can just sit and it's a little high it sits a little high on there i don't like this too much but if you wanted a regular bruce wayne from the ascending knight batman from mezco that does sit on there just a little bit better even if it still doesn't pop on but if you wanted to go for a young bruce wayne and ninja training there you go of course all of the head swaps i'm doing now will work with the gold skull ninjas as well as the golden dragon gomez but this is just to give you an idea of some options with this particular colorway we're going to try the John Stewart Green Lantern head, which actually does pop on there. It sits maybe just a little bit high, but I think this looks pretty good, especially with the hood up. It could be pretty cool if you've got multiple of these and you just want to give all your different ninjas some personalities, you know, you can give them these different head swaps. And we can also try the Deathstroke Slade Wilson head off of the two Deathstroke figures, PX and regular, both come with this head. But that looks pretty good. It doesn't pop on there clean, but it sits on there pretty good if you want a another generic kind of evil villain ninja with an eye patch. Now moving into some Marvel figure head swaps, we can try this Magneto head off the regular release of Magneto, which I think actually looks pretty good. It looks, he kind of looks a little bit like Robert Carradine in the ninja outfit, you know, if you wanted to have him be a 70s martial arts film villain. There you go, that looks pretty solid and it pops on there cleanly. We also have this Steve Rogers head off Commander Rogers in both versions of Captain America. It doesn't pop on clean, but can kind of work you know this kind of looks like duke from gi joe maybe in in ninja training as snake eyes is putting him through some ninja training we can try one of my favorite swaps actually which is the mark specter head off of the mdx moon knight and this looks pretty good you know especially with the mask rolled up really sells the ninja effect and matches well with this colorway the regular release has the white so it wouldn't work quite as well you kind of do need the mdx to get this kind of look off of it you can try this unmasked matt murdoch head you know, maybe he's training to lead the hand and he is just in a regular generic hand ninja outfit. But this actually I think looks pretty good. It pops on there cleanly. And then another favorite head swap of mine which pops on there. Not as good as I would like it to, but can just sit there cleanly. It is the Doctor Strange head, which I think this actually works really well as a Raz al Ghul, a Raish al Ghul. You can make this work pretty well in certain displays, especially if you've got all the other ninjas like I'll show you here. You know, you can kind of have a young Bruce Wayne in ninja training, like I said, and here is his master from those times. Raish al Ghul, pretty cool. And then finally, we can try on this head, which is actually not a Mezco, so I do have to put this little adapter piece on it, which does snap on there. And then you can slide this head sculpt on there, and it is a Tony Stark head sculpt which I've shown off in my collection video which you can find on this channel and you'll see that this could be an alternative option for Ra's al Ghul if you don't want to spend a Doctor Strange head and you do have this one lying around if you want like Tom Cruise as Ra's al Ghul so in closing Clan of the Crimson Dragon Gomez is another fantastic addition into the Gomez universe you know the Rumble Society and I may be a little biased once again because of the red and black colorway, but this could be my favorite of all of the Ninja Gomez's, including the Gold Skull Ninjas, which to me were a little bit more of like generic army builders, whereas this one really feels like his own character, even more so than the Golden Dragon, which was kind of an inverse colorway of the Golden Skulls, and so it feels like he could kind of blend in with them and be part of their clan, maybe their leader. This one, I think, really has his own personality and his own identity. And that goes beyond just the red and black colorway, of course. Now, I hope he becomes available pretty soon. My speculation is that it might be for New York Comic Con. So if that does happen, my only hope is that it is not part of a bundle pack so that it 
it's possible to army build these maybe get one or two extra just as you know to allow some options for some hand ninjas with some of my other figures you know they're just a head swap away from being some pretty good generic hand ninjas so it would be nice to be able to pick up a couple of these at a reasonable price don't get me wrong i love all the swag and i have my own little mezco swag collection but sometimes it is nice just being able to get a couple of the figures especially when they work so well as army builders. So shout out once again to Adam. Cannot thank him enough for giving me a special look at this figure. Just one of the nicest guys working in the toy industry today. He is at playing with myself on Instagram. You can listen to him on the Toy Migos podcast as well, where they call him Prospect. And if you like this review, make sure you hit like, leave a comment, subscribe for some more Mezco content and coverage coming your way very soon. I'm Fobster, and I'll see you in the next video.